Welcome back. The Treasury Department's distributed $150 billion to counties and cities in 30 days as part of the Coronavirus Relief Fund. The National Academy of Public Administration has recommendations for agencies that are implementing programs with quick turnaround times effectively. Terry Gertens, President and CEO of the National Academy of Public Administration. Terry, thanks for coming on. I look at your latest work and I want to ask you to start. How much of the issue is how much money an agency has to move? How much of the problem is how many jurisdictions or different places does the money have to go? And how much of the challenge is how fast that money has to get out the door? You know, Francis, I think the answer is yes to all of them, right? <laughs> You know, the ARP um, is pushing a lot of money out the door. So the, the pipeline or the size of the pipe is, is important, but there are new provisions to existing programs. So those have to be changed and coded. There are new recipients um, that, that didn't exist before. So those have to be changed and coded. And there is an incredible urgency about getting this money out. So it's all of those, it's, re it's really challenging, but I do think that the federal workforce is so committed to this and, and feels so much value in being able to share this assistance and get it out to the right people that they're dedicated to making it work. One of the issues that people talk start to talk about whenever there's a big amount of money that goes out the door is improper payments. Every administration since I've been paying attention to this stuff has focused on improper payments. How has that evolved over time and what did you and your team look at when it comes to people not getting the money that aren't supposed to get money? Well, I, I think one of the, the important innovations here is the creation of the PRAC um, and giving it oversight. And they've really done a lot to um, collaborate with the federal agencies and with the recipients. One of the recommendations that we do make in the report is about establishing program offices in the agencies that are having to oversee this massive distribution of funds. And a key feature of that is working with the PRAC, but also working with the recipients to make sure that you design these programs in a way that they're going to be able to execute them effectively and that you get guidance out up front that's clear and executable and flexible. So if you coordinate with the oversight bodies from the, from the beginning and you design that oversight and that flexibility into the programs, it's gonna make a huge difference in how the counties, especially at the receiving end of it, are going to be able to execute for results. That's one of the seven key areas that this uh, report focuses on where policy changes can make a big difference in getting these this money out the door effectively. Another one that uh, your team writes about, federal relief legislation should require formal evaluation of program impact during and at the end of the program. At the end of the program makes sense. How does one evaluate the effectiveness of a program like this in the middle of it, Terry? Well, and again, this is a place where that program office can be very collaborative. Um, and here we suggest that they coordinate with GAO from the beginning so that you're looking, effect looking at the impact of programs as they move along. You know what those evaluation criteria are going to be and you're designing for effectiveness. And equally important in that is finding the, the glitches, so to speak, in the execution so that you can design the next relief program or you can change the guidance as you move along so that the um, executing organizations can be more effective and at the same time compliant. I think one of the things we saw that's really interesting here is the longer that it takes you to, the longer that it takes the federal agencies to get their guidance out, the more risk averse the executing agencies are going to be, right? Because they don't want to be on the wrong side of a compliance checklist. So getting that guidance out quickly enables them to be in compliance. And then in partnership with the program office and the GAO and the PRAC, you can make sure that the guardrails are tight so that you avoid the waste, fraud, and abuse. One more of these I want to ask you about, and I commend all, all seven of these recommendations to folks who care about this stuff, and we have it posted at govmatters.tv slash resources. Improved intergovernmental collaboration and coordination needed. That's one that's probably been included in every NAPA report in the history of NAPA reports. What do you see here that potentially can work so that the next time we have to talk about this, we at least can say we've seen some improvement. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think you're, you're exactly right, Francis. And we can't over, as, uh, over articulate how important um, that this money is for driving real institutional change and making real progress. But we do think that it's really important to have an integrating body at the federal level 
that can coordinate horizontally across all of the different federal programs that are delivering these kinds of, of uh, funds, and then vertically across all the levels of government. We've called it in other channels, a national investment board. And it's that organization that would sit at the center, um, make sure that all of the agencies, perhaps at the undersecretary level or the deputy secretary level, are making um, the rules as flexible as we can so that the organizations that have to deliver these funds can really think about um, the, the, the ultimate recipient, the citizen and but, make sure that we're doing the best and making these programs work the best for them. So that integration at the central point is really, really important. We have about 20 seconds left, Terry. Where should that National Investment Board live or does it matter? Um, you know, it, it probably needs to be overseen out of the White House. Um, it can be part of the Domestic Policy Council, uh, but it needs to have White House uh, endorsement and oversight, very similar to the way that the uh, American Recovery Act was run uh, about a decade ago. Terry Girton, thanks very much as always. Thanks, Francis.